Hi there, this is Calculus Integrals, uh, the substitution rule. And uh, to be honest, what I kind of view this as is kind of the opposite of the chain rule. So, um, just what if? What if you had an integral of f of x times, let's say, x prime dx? Okay, so I know that seems a little odd shaped here. I can even I can even write it out in more even more general state. What if it was f as a function of gx all multiplied by the derivative gx dx? Well, if you let u equal gx, okay, in this example, you let u equal gx. Realize that du would equal g prime x dx. Okay? So then what you can do is you can actually replace it and run the same concepts on a simpler substitution problem, which is f u du, which you might be able to solve much easier. So that's the idea. You're supposed to just substitute to simplify a problem. And let's run through some examples, because you're probably thinking, well, when am I going to ever use that? Well, you'd be surprised. Let's say you have integral 2x to the square root of 1 minus 4x squared. How about that? That's probably looking confusing to you. You're going, okay. Well, basically what I want you to do is I want you to dissect it. I want you to dissect it. I want you to come up with the u, and I want you to come up with a du. Okay? Now, if you can't think, oh, well, which one do I come up with first, what you do is you realize, you need to realize that whatever the derivative of what you pick u is, is going to have to be within the equation. So, let me just pick one for you so you can see it. I'm going to pick 1 4x squared. And generally, it's always the things inside, like the square root or the square, or inside the parentheses. It's usually that thing. So, I'm just picking that as my u. And when I do that, uh, you'll see, if I take the derivative of this value right here, the 1 drops out, you have a negative still there, you multiply the 2 over, you have negative... 8x. Correct? Good. Well, dx, by the way, don't forget that. So, what you need to realize is we need it in a form where you have 2x dx, right? We have, what we have is 2x dx. So, what do we have to do to du to get that from here? Well, you divide it by negative 4. So, negative one-fourth du is actually 2x dx. And that's just looking at the, this past relationship right here. Just looking right here. So now that you have this squared box over here, and you have this value over here, now all you do is you plug in. You switch everything out. What you have is you still have the square root of u. But then what what is du? What's going to be du? Du is going it's going to be negative one fourth du. Now everything's looking really simple because then you're going okay. Well now I know how to solve this. You pull the one negative one fourth out and you, you take the integral of essentially u to the one-half power du which working through the math you get u 3 over 2 divided by 3 over 2 which once again working out the math you're gonna get a total of 1 over 6, negative 1 over 6, u to the 3 over 2. Now remember, 
you always should plug it back in. Or you can just point out that when you could say when u equals 1 minus 4x squared. You can also do that, but I know a lot of teachers that really hate it. So sometimes you have to just write it out simply. You just keep all your forms the same, and you say 1 minus 4x squared to the 3 over 2. And that is your solution. Don't simplify it because the teacher's going to have a hard time finding the answer in that if you simplify it. So I would always just leave it like that. All right. Let's do a quick uh, another example. How about a fun one? I always thought these trick ones were fun. Look at this. Integral of 10x dx. Well, let's split it apart algebraically. Okay? That's sine x over cosine x, right? Remember, there's dx here. So now, I want you to pick your u. Pick your u, because we don't know how to do division. I mean, we knew, we knew what tan x was. We know that that's going to that's gonna equal something pretty cool and interesting, but we don't know quite yet. So, how are we going to solve for this? Well, let's look. What if I picked u as cosine x? Now, some people say, well, why, why would you pick that? Why wouldn't you pick sine? Well, the thing is, if I picked sine, if I picked my sine as my u, then realize that you're going to have the du be cosine, right? Cosine dx. And you need to realize that 1 divided by cosine x dx does not equal cosine dx. It's actually, like, it's really difficult to get there. So realize that uh, you can make quick, uh, real easy algebra mistakes by just glancing. So you got to pay attention. I suggest that you do u equals cosine and let the du come out to be negative sine x dx. Okay. That way, when you plug this in, when you get the whole thing, you should have essentially 1 over u, right? 1 over u, and a negative du. Well, you take the negative out and you have negative 1 over u du, which equals negative ln u plus c. Well, you just plug in what u is. What is u? And actually, I just reminded myself, remember, there's a c here. You need to have that c at the end of this problem. So don't forget that. See, I, I forgot it. I would have gotten an f in the test. Don't forget. Don't forget your constants. Ever, ever, ever. Okay, so back to this one. You have negative uh, natural log u plus c. So negative ln of what our u is. Our u is cosine, so it's actually cosine x plus c. And that's our solution. So, it takes a fair amount of intuition to uh, to solve some of these, but what I suggest you do is pick one mentally. Pick a, a, a substitution value mentally and ask yourself, is the derivative of that substitution number, in our case, is the derivative of cosine available? And it was. Sine was there. So that's why I went with that one. So, And you'll pick this up, especially as you do more and more examples. So, um, 
Please leave a comment in my channel if you'd like more examples, and I hope you guys have a good day. I'll see you guys in the next series.